I wish you could see the palette at the same time, but I can't figure out how to get all three, me, the painting, and the palette at the same time. So this is just a trial. Started out with a Naples yellow, which is always nice to have way down on the horizon. Switched over to a more teal color here. And then I'm gonna go to a cobalt. Finishing up this sky wash. Switched over to this cobalt blue. It's not the most even wash I've ever done, but kind of interesting to have a little variation sometimes in the sky. And there we are. First layer, that blue sky. I'm gonna do the same thing with the foreground, the whole ocean, this, the river there. Uh, it's not quite dry yet. Still figuring out where it's gonna lay. I don't know if you can see the different variations in blue there, make it kind of interesting for the eye. There's a little bloom. I didn't mean to do that, that's okay. Watercolor does that. After putting in that warm house, I'm now putting in the uh, yeah, reddish house. Now I'm putting in this orange boat. And you can see that I, you know, I'm working around these little shapes that might be blue like that one or white. And then you can also see that I overlapped the blue. I went right over the blue and this orange and the blue are kind of combining uh, to get a grayer orange color. You can see I put another cup, uh, another little shapes in here. They look kind of like little puzzle pieces. Uh, I wanted to show you one of the brushes. I usually use a lot of flat brushes, this kind of thing. I also use these ones that are more like little angular flat brushes. I really like them. Reason is you can get into cool little uh, areas like this more easily. A little oblique and what's the opposite of oblique areas? I looked at this before I started painting it, trying to decide, okay, what's going to be blue and what am I going to save? I think we'll go all the way like this. side here. This is cobalt blue. It's mixed in with a little something brown. Keep it from being too blue. I think it has a little burnt sienna in it. Just a little bit. Keep it from being blue blue. There we go. That's that little section. First little shape. Put on a little blue over that warm. It's going to make it a little gray. Thought I should point out that if I thought, ooh, I don't really want it to be blue. You can erase it. Paper towel. Back to good. With watercolor, once it dries, it's there. But until it's dried, you can change it. It's a common misconception. People think you can't make any mistakes in watercolor. You can, but you gotta decide pretty quick whether you want it there or not. This is called the thirsty brush. I dry my brush off, no liquid in there, so it's called the thirsty brush. Now when I touch it to that, it's gonna soak it up a little bit like a sponge. So I raised the value, I sucked up some of the paint, it's gonna be a little lighter, it's gonna be a real light gray. Spot next to it, I think I'm gonna do warm. So it's gonna be a worm on top of the warm.
and the one behind that. Maybe go a little, a little more greenish with that one. There we go. Overlay a couple shapes there. They're kind of background shapes. They shouldn't be too dark. They're kind of just, this is the trees in the background beyond the bridge. This is a bridge here. I don't know what that is. A roof maybe of a house or a boat. Another little rooftop thing. Here, I was gonna put this little warm feature in. Thought it would, it's gonna make it pretty red. So let's see if I can. There's the warm one I was gonna put in. Then we're, we'll put that cold one, the cool blue that I was gonna put in. You can see that it's gonna stay real blue because I left it white, remember? So I put a little puddle of blue on there. Sometimes with my fingernail, I can push it back. It's like a little squeegee. If you paint over sections you didn't want to, you kind of use your fingernail to push it back. There's that little red spot I was going to put on there, and there's a little blue spot. If I think it's too blue, do my little thirsty brush again, squoze all the liquid out of there with a paper towel, and I suck it back up a little bit, make it not quite so blue. If I decided, hey, you know what, it was kind of cool blue, kind of liked it blue, I can drop the blue back in there. I did a different kind of blue this time, a little more teal in there. A little look at my palette here. You can see I got oranges, reds, purples, yellows. So from this side over, it's all warmer colors. This side, colder colors. Got teal and greens and blues all through here. And on the palette, the mixing surfaces itself, this should be much colder here. This should be warmer. Sometimes. I need more colors. You know, this yellow, I don't have room for it maybe in my palette there. So I just take a plate. Then this becomes a, like a little specialty orange palette that I would just be mixing up oranges. And because we're working on this uh, seascape that has a big orange rescue boat, it's like an emergency boat, uh, I'm gonna do a lot of different oranges. That's why I needed that extra palette. You can see our paintings coming along now. Done on a lot of this kind of neutral. This is all supposed to kind of tie together this kind of horizontal band. And you'll see that I leave little white forms throughout the whole thing. Those are so I can later on, I can choose what color they happen to be. Coming right along here. Huh? You can see things are starting to take shape. You can actually see the boat there because I got the water line, the windows put in. These dark shapes are really what starts to make it all click.
All right, paint's pretty much done here. Starting to read pretty good, all the colors. Um, you can see how putting these darks, so suddenly everything isn't just kind of floating in space. It's all, like it's all set somewhere. And the reflections help that a little bit. I might darken some of these reflections here. But otherwise, pretty happy with it. Usually what I do now is I use one of these clips here, uh, hang it on the wall, and then just walk by it for another week, just making sure that there isn't anything that doesn't read right or doesn't, that, it, that I don't hadn't missed or something. And usually I'll drop in, at this point, I'll have some fun and just drop in a couple little jewels, like maybe, Maybe I'll notice that there's a color missing. There aren't any greens. Could be cool to drop a green here and there. Um, maybe a purple or something. Especially some of these little shapes that are that are left white, and it's one of the reasons I leave them. All these little white shapes. Well, that'd be pretty cool every now and then to have one of those, like a, like a little jewel, just kind of uh, sparkling with a little another color that you wouldn't expect or maybe even some of the colors that are already in here. This turquoise is pretty cool. And these oranges, like a couple of these little shapes could be more orange, kind of make that orange pop a little. And a couple of those turquoises might unify the painting a little. Anyway, thanks for hanging with me while I painted this. This is the first, first video I've made while painting a painting, so hopefully I'll get better. Hopefully it was enjoyable.